Exodus chapter 11. Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. And the Lord said to Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards he will let you go from here. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out of here altogether. He's not just going to let you go. He's going to push you out the door. He's going to drive you to the airport, buy you a plane ticket, and send you on your way. He's going to be so anxious to get you out of here when I'm done with him. Verse 2, speak now in the ears of the people, and let every man borrow or ask of his neighbor, and every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold. In other words, go knock on the door. Tell your people, the Israelites, to knock on the door of the Egyptians and ask them for jewels, for valuables. And this would be back pay for all the years that they worked for nothing. Three, and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. So, you know, the people and even the servants of Pharaoh had respect for Moses. The only one who evidently did not respect him really was Pharaoh. But the people were smarter than their leader. Four, and Moses said, thus says the Lord, about midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt. So something's going to happen at midnight. God's going to be there in a special way. Verse 5, And all the firstborn of the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sits upon his throne, even to the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts. And uh, this should not surprise Pharaoh because he warned them through Moses at the very beginning that if he didn't let the Israelites go free, then God would kill all of Egypt's firstborn. And he's going to make good on that threat. And it's going to be terrible. When God judges, it usually is. Verse 6, there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. It's going to be horrible because it says in verse 7, but against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that you may know that the Lord does put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. It's going to be turmoil and horror and death and wailing among all the Egyptians who do not believe the word of God. But God's going to make a clear separation once again between them and his people. It's going to be calm and peaceful among the Israelites. A dog won't even be barking among them. And you know how sensitive they are to anything strange or evil. They're the first ones to notice it, it seems like. A dog won't even bark among the Israelites. It's going to be completely different. Eight. And all these your servants shall come down to me and bow down themselves to me, saying, Get you out, and all the people that follow you. And after that, I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in great anger. Moses' final words to Pharaoh. Your people are going to come and bow down to me. You didn't tell me to leave. You didn't give me leave to leave. But your people are going to ask me to leave. And they're going to show respect for me. They're going to go above your head, king. And they're going to bow down to me. And then he left in anger. Moses walked down on Pharaoh again, this time in anger. Why? Because it came to this, and it didn't have to come to this. You think Moses is happy that the firstborn in Egypt are going to die? He's not happy about that. It is disgusting to him, just as it is no doubt disgusting to God. He's angry at Pharaoh because Pharaoh is the one who is bringing this to pass by his stubbornness. 9. And the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh shall not hearken to you, 
that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. So God's going to bring something good out of bad. Again, he's going to showcase the fact that he is God, and everyone's going to know that he is God, including Pharaoh, including the Egyptians, including the Israelites, including anybody else in the entire world who hears about this, including the people up over in the Promised Land who will hear about what God did in Egypt. This, is a, this miracle is going to be spread far and wide. And the reputation of God as being God will be known. 10. And Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh. And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go out of his land. And so we're going to see the death of the firstborn, something that did not have to be.